If we're learning anything about Kaylee Gonzalez, one of the four slain University of Idaho students, she was a really smart, caring, and aware girl. There's a new report about an old incident, but it shows us just how much Kaylee tried to help an older missing woman in 2021. The woman's name was Sharon Archer, and she was last seen in the area of her home in the area of Fifth Street and Locust Avenue on September 27th, 2021 around 10 p.m. Port Lane police are still asking for your help to find a missing and endangered woman. This is 62 year old Sharon Archer. She was last seen near her home in the area of Fifth Street and Locust Avenue last Monday night. She's believed to be wearing jeans, gray tennis shoes and possibly a black jacket. She was also driving a white 2013 Toyota Highlander. Now, police say she does not have her cell phone and it is considered endangered due to a medical condition. If you have any information about where she might be, please call the number on your screen. Have you seen Sharon Archer? The 62 year old woman was last seen in Coeur d'Alene a week ago. Her family is desperately trying to find her. Archer has no cell phone or money, only her car, and her family says they need to find her fast. A plea to the community. Pretty well, considering the worst at this point. Chris Arthur's mother, Sharon Archer, has been missing since last Tuesday. She left her house and around midnight, Archer was spotted about a mile away. The family tells me Sharon Archer was last seen at this Exxon gas station in Coeur d'Alene. She was on video going up to a locked front door, walked away and drove off in her SUV. Since then, there's been no sign of her. Arthur says there were a few people on bicycles, also on camera. Maybe if any of them were there and know where she, which way the car went, that'd be helpful. Archer's family needs to find her fast. She has to take a shot to help regulate her diabetes. The doctor, when we spoke to him, said basically about three days that she would have without her medication. She also got in a crash years ago, leaving her with serious brain damage. But it left her basically with the mind state of a, about an eight-year-old child. The family reported her missing, but wish there was a silver alert system in Idaho, like Washington. Digital highway signs and radio stations broadcast when someone is in danger because of their age, physical, or mental state. We all need each other. We all need our families. We all need our moms, our dads, everybody. We don't just go missing. We need something to change in this, in this state, and hopefully if we can change it in the state, we can change it throughout the country. For now, Chris and Julie are searching everywhere for Archer's car a 2013 white Toyota Highlander with Idaho plate K562919. They're preparing for this to not end well, but want some sort of closure. Hey, either way, I still want to get her home. She at least deserves final resting places. If you see Archer or her car, you're asked to call the Coeur d'Alene Police Department. Coeur d'Alene Police are still looking for a missing endangered woman. 62 year old Sharon Archer was last seen by her husband in late September. Police consider her in danger due to a medical condition. Both police and her family don't know where she could be and has a history of easily becoming disoriented. Anyone with information about her whereabouts should call the Coeur d'Alene Police Department. Tonight at 10 o'clock, a desperate plea from the family of missing Coeur d'Alene woman who hasn't been seen in more than two weeks now. 62 year old Sharon Archer was last seen on September 27th. She is described as five feet, 10 inches tall, 175 pounds with brown hair and blue eyes. She was last seen wearing jeans, gray tennis shoes, possibly a black jacket and a candy colored brace on her left leg. Archer is considered in danger due to a history of medical conditions and the length of time since she's been without her diabetes medicine. We spoke to her daughter in law tonight who was asking anyone for help in finding Archer, especially local business owners who might have video of her whereabouts. Now we're hoping the community will just help us bring her home. I mean, it's a 50 50 chance there's still a miracle that could happen, but there's a there's a 50 50 chance that we're it means it's been two weeks. We're really not going to get very good results. If she is still alive, she's definitely going to be in the hospital. Well, just today, Archer's family received new footage from the Coeur d'Alene Exxon on Appleway Avenue and Government Way and her car heading north. If you have any information on Archer's whereabouts, you are asked to contact the Coeur d'Alene Police Department. 
uh, at that number you can find on our website, which of course is creme.com. Sadly, the 62-year-old Sharon Renee Archer would not make it. She hailed from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. She was missing for about a month, and by October, Coeur d'Alene police had uncovered a car matching Sharon's car submerged in Fernan Lake. Coeur d'Alene police have pulled a car from the Fernan Lake, which belongs to a missing Idaho woman, Sharon Archer. They say a body was found inside. Police tell us that a person called the department to report something white off the boat docks, but it could only be seen when the sun hit it. The person saw posts on Facebook about search parties for Archer and decided to call in the object yesterday. When police arrived, they were able to locate the white 2013 Toyota Highlander about 150 feet from the shore. That car was last seen driven by Archer on September 28th. Police have not released the identity of the body found inside and the case, including the cause of death, is still pending further investigation. A body and a car have been found submerged in Fernand Lake over the weekend and police say that the car matches the description of one belonging to a woman who went missing in early October. So Up With Creme has been covering this for several weeks now. This morning, Nicole Hernandez is at Fernand Lake where that car was found. Good morning, Nicole. What have you learned? Yeah, good morning, guys. Like you mentioned, I am live here at Fernand Lake and Coeur d'Alene police tell us that they actually had somebody call in, say that they saw something white off of this boat dock here. They said they specifically only saw it when the sun was shining on it, glinting in the sunlight. So that's when police responded to that call and they found a car with a body inside of it. So that car belonged to Sharon Archer. She has been missing for about one month. The person who found the car saw a post on Facebook about the search for Archer. That's when they decided to call in what they saw on Saturday. Police found the car about 150 feet from the shore. It was last seen driven by Archer, but police have not at this point identified who the body was inside of that car or the cause of death. So they are still continuing this investigation. We'll make sure to bring you updates as we get any. Live in Coeur d'Alene, I'm Nicole Hernandez. It appears as if Sharon may have just gotten confused. She was a diabetic. This wasn't a case I had heard of. I did see it's covered on web sleuths, but it proves that Kaylee Gonzalez was a caring young woman because she reached out to police after she thought she saw Sharon in a Walmart. So there's several things that this newly released police report, this incident report tells us. It tells us that Kaylee was very aware. It also gives us an idea of when Kaylee lived at 1122 King Road. And just like her family said, Kaylee was a web sleuth and she really cared about people. She was smart. She knew who was around her. She knew who was watching her. And that's what this police report will entail. According to the police report, Kaylee called 911 on October 5th. 2021. Kaylee gave her address at that point as 1122 King Road in Moscow, Idaho. So I know there's been a lot of questions about when Kaylee and the other girls moved into that infamous house. Some suggested Kaylee and the other girls had moved in just that summer, but according to this police report, Kaylee had been there at least since October 5th of 2021. That's why she gave that address to police. It helps to see valid, truthful information coming from cops so we can get a timeline together as more and more of these incidents become public knowledge. I know Zaina posted a TikTok in November 13th, 2021, oddly, exactly one year prior to the horrific slayings, and it appeared as if the party was being held in the 1122 King Road house and we can see Kaylee there. I knew that meant maybe she didn't live there, maybe she attended a party there, but this police report makes it seem as though Kaylee did in fact live there as early as October, 2021. And it lists her boyfriend and it lists how they were at Walmart late one night when Kaylee thought she saw Sharon. It's so amazing to me that Kaylee as a young woman, she didn't just brush it off and say, oh, that's not her. Who cares about that old woman? Or Kaylee literally stopped and took the time to not only call police, but send police the missing woman's flyer and even prompt them to look for surveillance footage of the missing woman, Sharon. I'm sure Kaylee may have seen some of these videos that I'll play throughout this video, just showing a week has passed. Okay, now it's been two weeks and just how upset her family member was 
and how people were grieving this missing woman, especially not having any answers. So Kaylee took it upon herself to reach out to police. The narrative says that Kaylee Gonzalez called to report she believed she saw an older female who had been reported as missing out of Coeur d'Alene in the Walmart in Moscow. So that's where Kaylee was with her boyfriend. It's a Walmart super center. It's at 2470 West Pullman Road. It's only a hop, skip, and a jump over to the 1122 King Road house, probably their closest Walmart. Two and a half miles away, a seven minute drive, and Kaylee was apparently there late with her boyfriend around 1022. Yes, the time on the call is 2225.51, so that should be 1025 p.m. So Kaylee called police to report she believed she saw an older female who had been reported as missing out of Coeur d'Alene in the Walmart in Moscow. Kaylee told me, says the report written by Sergeant Dustin Blaker. Kaylee told me the female's name is possibly Sharon Archer, 62. Kaylee told me the female was staring at her and her boyfriend when they were in the store and as they checked out. Kaylee told me she didn't see the missing person flyer until several hours later. Just like her family said, Kaylee was aware of her surroundings. She kept her head on a swivel. I'm assuming her boyfriend here they're mentioning is Jack. By that point, maybe they were still together in October 2021. And Kaylee was aware. She said, maybe this woman is Sharon Archer. The female was staring at her and her boyfriend when they were in the store and as they checked out. So no wonder Kaylee would have been aware of any stalker because she wasn't the type, it seems like she was lost in her phone 24-7. I mean, I know she used her phone a lot at the grub truck, but she was obviously still aware of her surroundings to be able to contact police for this. The officer went on to say, Kaylee forwarded me the flyer and I have electronically attached it to this report. Officers responded to Walmart to see if we could find the Toyota Highlander Archer was reported to be in. We did not find the vehicle. I had my officers check all of the hotels in town to see if she was staying at one of them. We did not find anything. I went to contact one of the managers for Walmart. I asked the manager if I could review the video surveillance camera to see if the person Kaylee reported was in fact Archer. The manager told me there was currently no one in the store who had access to the video surveillance cameras. I was given an email to send a request to someone who could access it on October 6, 2021. I will review the video if and when we are able to get it. So that's where that report left off. I don't know if the officer was ever able to get any surveillance footage. I don't know if this woman was really Sharon or not. But what impressed me is that this shows Kaylee's heart. I'm trying to get the 911 call now so we can hear her voice. Indeed, I see why her family, of course, and parents and everyone was so impressed with this young lady. Not every 20 or 21 year old or whomever may have taken the time to stop and said, wait, hmm, did I see that woman in Walmart? Okay, she's on a missing flyer. I think that's the one who was staring us down. And then take the time to call police, make a report, send them the flyer of the woman that she's talking about. I see the videos, the news reports didn't get a lot of play on YouTube about Sharon. So it's good that Kaylee was aware that she was even missing. I mean, sadly, it turns out the woman, I'm assuming, got disoriented, had a diabetic condition, and that may have caused her to get disoriented and drive into this Fernand Lake. I'm not sure where that case stands at this point, if they've determined indeed why the woman ended up in the water. It's only 3.1 miles away from where Sharon was last seen. A seven minute drive, you know, late at night, seen at 10 p.m. and then seen on surveillance at a gas station. Unfortunately, accidents like that can happen. We saw in the Kylie Rodney case, Sometimes how easy it is to go into water and some people don't get out. I mean, I just read about this case where a dad somehow ended up in the water. He didn't survive, but his two children, I believe it was Michigan, were able to miraculously, they're like seven and eight years old, get out, 
It's a miracle they even made it out. They were so cold and freezing, but they made it out of the vehicle and they survived. So you never know what'll happen when the car goes into water. The other thing happening lately with this case, kind of surrounding this case, there was notice hereby given that Kara Denise Kernodal, we know that's Zana's mom, Kara's attorney of record is hereby changed. This was filed back on January 5th, 2023. Some of these reports take a while to be found or discovered. Ann Taylor is the public defender defending Brian Koberger, but now Ann Taylor is the public defender who is withdrawing from Kara's case. And there's a new attorney and substitution of record, Christopher D. Schwartz. So that's the latest news on Twitter about conflict of interest and such. I think what we have to do in this case is really wait for a lot of confirmation from police like we are seeing now. We saw People Magazine, Steve Helling come out with a report saying, yes, Brian Koberger went to the Mad Greek restaurant at least twice and he ordered some vegan pizza and he made sure, according to an ex-employee, he made sure that no meat products, animal products had touched his food or his what have you, his, uh, his vegan pizza. But then pretty soon after, the Mad Greek restaurant came out with a scathing post on Facebook really coming against the ex-employee or saying they needed their 15 minutes of fame or you know, let us grieve. I've noticed a trend with some people in Idaho where they're very much against reporters. I can understand if reporters are being intrusive and just knock, knock, knocking on a person's house in their place of business and being in their face and just not giving people space. Of course, no one wants that. But Steve Helling seems to be confirming that that is exactly what law enforcement told him. I always look at the exact wording. Steve Helling gave an interview to News Nation, wherein the People writer was interviewed about Brian Koberger stopping at the Mad Greek. The reporter asked him directly, law enforcement tells you they're aware that Koberger ate at the restaurant where two of the victims worked. Law enforcement tells you uh, they're aware that Koberger ate at the restaurant where two of the victims worked followed three of the female victims on Instagram, even repeatedly messaged one of them and never got a response. So what could the reasoning be, do you think, for investigators withholding that evidence? Well, right now, I think that investigators are really trying to put together an airtight case. They're trying to figure out something that they can do to make sure that they have a conviction. And um, so they're not going to tell us everything. You know, obviously we're hearing bits and pieces, which is what happens in these situations, as you know, but we're never going to know everything that the cops have until the time comes that they're ready to tell us. And Steve is saying, yeah, cops have revealed things to him that perhaps the judge doesn't want out. So I'm not so quick to call that a false report. What might be happening is perhaps the mad Greek restaurant owner or manager, I'm not sure of her role, she might be just so fed up or she might not want Brian Koberger's name associated at all with their restaurant. And of course, who would blame her? I wouldn't want it associated with anything I'm associated with also, but it doesn't change the fact that if he really did eat there, it's not her fault. It doesn't taint the place. It doesn't mean that they're going to lose business or lose their appeal if that's really the problem. I don't quite understand why she came out so vehemently against this report and claiming reporters need to fact check. And I think everyone's just trying to figure out what's happening. Now, of course, it could be some person posing as an ex-employee, and I think that would be pretty easy to verify. I would assume by now a journalist like this has already seen hopefully some type of proof um, a direct deposit statement or however they were paid or just some type of proof to say, okay, at least you worked at the Mad Greek. You know, have cops run, I'm sure, looking for Brian Koberger's name if he paid, you know, with something that can be traced to his name. I think when it all comes out, when we do see discovery, when we see more information, I do believe we will probably likely see that Brian did visit the Mad Greek, but that's no reason that restaurant should be harassed or I don't know if there's some kind of survivor's guilt and oh I didn't protect the girls none of that none of that is anyone's fault 
except the perpetrator of these crimes. So I think there's a lot more going on with that that we just don't know yet and it's causing confusion, but that's why I like to see exact reports from the cops to prove what happened when. And with this incident report coming out, we now have proof Kaylee Gonzalez listed at 1122 King Road as early as October 5th, 2021. So Kaylee lived in that house a while. And if I heard the Gonzalez family correctly in some of these prior interviews they've given recently, they're all kind of again melding together Dateline 2020 and Chronicles of Olivia, her excellent interview with the family. I believe I heard Christy Gonzalez say that Maddie moved in that house at least a couple of years earlier. We have to wait for exact dates, wait for more hearings to come out. I'm glad Ann Taylor withdrew from this other case because it would be related, of course, to the Idaho Four. And Ann Taylor is probably just going to need all the time she can handle to deal with Ryan. We don't want him, if he is guilty, we don't want him getting off on some kind of technicality such as that. We don't want anyone claiming he's not getting a fair trial. We'll see what happens, but that report really did warm my heart in a way. It's bittersweet because, of course, Sharon didn't survive and Kaylee didn't survive. Here was Kaylee, a young woman, taking time out of her night to care about another woman, which just, it seems so sweet. James 1.5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Thank you for watching.